glass and two stories between us. But can you feel the energy? We did. This is Toyosu in Tokyo. The world's largest wholesale fish and seafood market. At 5.30 in the morning, it feels like a night market. With all the hustle, bustle, and handling. The prized product of which is bluefin tuna. Think sushi and sashimi. The Japanese are the world's most voracious consumers of tuna. Why do Japanese love to eat tuna? マグロは好きかって言ったら、そういうまず美味しいマグロがある。それとそれを食べ比べて判断できる下がる。だから多分日本人でマグロは好きだと思う。Yuki Yamaguchi is known as Japan's tuna king. Having expanded his tuna brokerage business to become the biggest at the Tsukiji fish market. Toyosu's predecessor. It's a business, he says, that's anchored on the culture. And culture, he says, doesn't vanish. This despite the value of some bluefin tunas skyrocketing to incredible amounts. In 2018, Yuki Taka spent over 340,000 US dollars on a single bluefin. And yet, the appetite for tuna has grown steadily in recent years. The result, sustainability advocates say, has been a dramatic decline in bluefin tuna population. Um, there's many species in tuna, but if we talk about bluefin tuna, which is most significant in terms of like um, decrease of the population, it's went really bad. I think the stock status now is still like around 4% of the virgin stock, original stock. 4%? Yes, that bad. Hello and welcome to this edition of Assignment Asia. I'm Barnaby Lowe. When it comes to sushi, Tuna is king. When it comes to tuna, Japan is king. The Japanese consume about a quarter of the world's tuna and 80% of all the bluefin variety. But can the catch from our seas keep up with demand? Environmentalists have been warning of extinction for years. Now, even Japanese fishermen are alarmed. Another morning, another tuna and seafood auction. This, however, very much at the bottom of the chain. Ports like these supply fish and seafood to markets in cities, including Tokyo's Toyosu. The people running the port and selling the fish mostly fishermen themselves who've lived off the abundance of bluefin tunas their whole lives in waters around their island, Iki. They pride themselves for sticking to traditional pole in line fishing, even though there are more modern methods. But it's become harder and harder to catch their prized bluefin tunas. So out of all the fish that are to be auctioned this morning here in this wharf in the island of Iki, these are the only tunas. And right here at the end of the line 
is the biggest one that they have this morning, but it's just over 20 kilos. 20 kilos may sound hefty, but Pacific Reefed Tunas can grow to up to over 400 kilos. Large tunas didn't used to be a rarity for Minoru Nakamura, who's been a fisherman for three decades and was born and raised in Niki. Business must have been really good. I mean, the fishermen here must have been making pretty decent money. More than enough meant making upwards of 6,000 US dollars a month. Now, most Iki fishermen earn between $1,500 and $3,000 a month, below the region's average monthly income. So whereas before he she didn't need to work, now every member of the family has to work. It was surreal to hear Minoru say it, but it's his reality and he wanted to show me. He invited me and my crew to sail out into the sea with him. It was the dead of winter, supposedly their usual bluefin tuna fishing season. So we can only get this far because of the rough sea conditions. We're only about half an hour out from the Iki port and this is the source of livelihood of Iki fishers. It's the home of a variety of marine resources including the very valuable bluefin tuna. Tunas, strictly speaking, are migratory. But Minoru says we've stopped right where there should be loads of tunas in January. Although he spoke in the past tense, he was clearly still holding out hope that he'd be able to catch a bluefin while we were at sea. We floated for hours in rough waters, waiting for a good catch. Minoru attempted once. And twice. Third time's a charm. Nope. But on the fourth try, success. Well, partial success. It wasn't a tuna, and it was a small fish. By that time, my crew and I were already seasick. But Minoru was determined to give it another shot. It took a while, but he was able to catch a bigger, more valuable fish this time around. But no luck with tuna. まあ、海にマグロおらんけん。漁に行ってもマグロが食わんけん。マグロ漁師じゃないたいね。<笑> 
だけんきのんごとクエとかヒラメとかああいうとば釣らんとちょっとでも足しにせんとような状態だ。I mean, to me, that sounds very sad. That must be even sadder for you. <笑>自分も悲しかばってね、仕方ないったいね、今現状、全然ここに,ここにもおらんし、まあ、日本国中あんまり釣れてないちゅう、言うとも聞くけん、大きいのがおらんもんね、全く小さいのもおらんけど。Why is there a declining population of tuna? やっぱ取りすぎちゅう思うばってね、まあ、海遊の変化もあろうばって。やっぱ大きい船が取りすぎるんやろ巻き網とかがそれが原因ちゅう思うけど By big boats, what Minoru was referring to are commercial fishing companies that have the capital, manpower and technology to be able to make sizable yields of tuna From your perspective, how exactly are they overfishing? マグロの産卵時期があるんやそれに集中し産卵のマグロバとっちまうけんだけんマグロは減っていく一方で子供も産ませんしねだけん減っていくばっかりちゅうんだ<笑>オカオハナオカ of the conservationist organization Seafood Legacy agrees In Japan、um, over 90% of the catch is、uh, juvenile before it gets matured before it gets、um, spawned I mean, it's, it's simple that if you don't、um, have the reproduction, you don't get more fish inside the water. The government acknowledges overfishing as a long standing problem in Japan, but stops short of putting the blame squarely on large scale fishing companies. They, they have a certain limitation. So,、uh, you know, the,、uh, we Impose catch limit for not only small scale fishing but also large scale everybody. Large scale fishermen have to cut 55% of what they used to catch. For coastal fishermen, a little less, 45%. Which, Iki fishers say, may sound fair but isn't in actuality. <laughs> もともとが少ない漁獲量を半減されちゃうわけやろ。巻き網とか大量に取ろったば半減と、少ないとば半減っていうたん全然違うわけ。This imbalance, they believed, was because commercial scale fishing companies had the ear of the government. But they also believed they could make a difference if they acted together. Iki fishers battle to save bluefin tunas and their livelihood. Next. At any other time of the day, the sound of nature is punctuated only by the occasional hum of boat engines. There are only about 150 tuna fishing boats left on the island of Iki. There were around 800. 30 years ago. Once every couple of weeks, however, there's action. Or more accurately, people taking action in a tiny room located in a corner of the wharf. This is the Iki Tuna Resources Association. <laughs> うん、資源ば回復させないけんねえちゅう思ってマグロ資源を考える会ちゅうのを立ち上げて、まあ、会長をしてます The year was 2013 Iki's fishers were filled with optimism about what they could do to save the sea's tunas and their industry 
They thought it best, initially, to lead by example. で、その、They went to the government with the idea, and with the hope that their self-imposed moratorium could be enforced elsewhere in Japan, and on all tuna fishers, small and large. But the government saw no point in a total seasonal tuna fishing ban. The proposal was rejected. What, what is the reason for seasonal ban? You know, the, the, because scientifically speaking, most important thing is uh, the amount of catch you make. So even if you ban certain fishing season, but if you catch more fish outside the banned fishing season, it's the same. You know? Having failed to get the government on board, the self-imposed fishing ban of coastal fishermen proved unsustainable. It did it work for you during those three years? Yeah, やっぱ大中巻き網は大量に取るんやけど自分たちがしてもその何十本とか何百本の世界で我慢してるだけやけんそこまでは変わることはないここでが一生懸命生活できんぐらい我慢してで産卵期に巻き網が大量に取ってここ
is disheartening, especially for younger fishermen like 37-year-old Tomokazu Tominaga, who thought they'd be fishing for life. Attractive meant profitable. Enough for Tomokazu to leave his teaching career in the city and return permanently to his hometown. Unfortunately for him, those days were short-lived. He's been struggling to make ends meet in the last couple of years. え、まあ、生活のための you have a college degree and you're still relatively young. Why do you continue doing this? If he's going to have any chance of staying in business long term though, Tomokazu knows he can't stay on the sidelines which is why he's been aggressively lobbying for a bigger share of the catch quota. You're probably one of the few younger men that I'm seeing in the fishing industry here in Iki. Do you feel the weight on your shoulder of, you know, uh, maybe trying to single-handedly save this industry, be the future of in this, this industry in Iki? So you me there are my pressure. But marine wildlife advocates do see a silver lining. The governments acknowledge uh, realize that the stock is in critical um, bad situation, so they start the management. That's that's good thing but it's still under the development so there's lots more things to improve no? that's including uh, bringing um, local community into the discussion the japanese government insists that their strategy of limiting the catch of immature bluefin tunas to half of what it used to be is working we are going to reach the interim revisiting target target even before 2024 so uh, we are even, you know, the, uh, running faster than expected. You know. But old timers in the traditional fishing tuna industry, like Minoru, don't share the optimism. What is Iki? Without the fishing industry, without without the tuna fishing industry. The struggle of Iki fishers at its core is a struggle to save their livelihood and a tradition of tuna fishing that has thrived for generations. But their fight to save the sea's tunas is a fight that could very well have an impact beyond this island. I'm Barnaby Lowe. Thanks for watching. And join us again on Assignment Asia.
Share your thoughts and contribute story ideas for future shows by contacting us on social media. Thank you.